Welcome to this Venture Camp. The place where anything can happen. Guess what? I'm gay! This Venture Camp is an animated web series on YouTube created by Odd Nation Cartoons. It's a reality-based competition that takes its roots from shows like Survivor as well as Total Drama. The creators, Jared Madrigal and Robert Castellanos, have just announced their upcoming third season of this successful series is going to be All-Stars, which means characters from both season one and two will return to battle it out one last time for the million dollar prize. If you guys also don't know, I interviewed both the creators on this channel. I'll leave a link to that full interview in the comments if you'd like to learn more. Also, I voiced two Rio current characters on the show being Oliver, the quirky down-on-his-luck intern, and Connor, the out-of-touch midlife crisis. I was also an assistant writer for Disventure Camp Season 1, the remake. In this video, I want to celebrate the successes of this online cartoon by looking back on what we've already seen. In preparation for All Stars, I thought we'd look at each season and I could give my quick thoughts on it. This will be in parts, however. Sorry I ain't got the time to make a one-hour analysis on these things, but make sure to subscribe to keep up and know when the next part of this retrospective is coming. Without further ado, let's get started with where it all began. This Venture Camp Season 1 Beta, also known as Adventure Camp, was released in 2020 and consisted of 10 episodes, each around 15 minutes, and a cast of 12 characters vying for the million dollars. The host being Jared Johnson. Huh. While we're here, I guess I could give my thoughts on the host. Jared is pretty serviceable. It's clear he's a competent host, very well-spoken and neutral to every contestant. He does lack some of the charisma and charm from the other hosts we will see in the later installments of the show, but as it stands, I think he still gets the job done. Jensen, on the other hand, is kind of just there. We barely see him in the entire show, and it's insinuated that he's a criminal. I wasn't that heavily invested in this storyline since it never directly affected the main competition, but it's inoffensive. I appreciate the attempt to give the characters outside of the competition a storyline. I think later seasons do this better, but that's going to be a running theme in this video. Sorry, y'all. Now, if you've watched my interview with Jared and Robert, you know that this season started off with a trailer that Jared and Robert posted to gauge interest, but after some promising stir online, I guess they decided to make the whole thing. Robert also mentioned in the interview that at this point, they both both still had their day jobs, so working on this season was a passion project that almost depleted all their life savings. As of now, both of them have quit their jobs to work on Odd Nation cartoons and Disventure Camp full time, which is a massive relief. Sorry, let's get back to the actual season, that was just a quick little tidbit. This is a very important note, but this season is officially non-canon to the current Disventure Camp universe. This season was remade recently with updated storylines and designs, so I won't dive into it this season as much as I will dive into it in the other later two videos. The cast of this season consists of a lot of fan favorites, including the obvious Tom and Jake, who are the bread and butter of the series for a lot of people. I also enjoy characters like Fiore, the literal child who turned out to have an evil side. And I also like some minor characters like Lil and Miriam. This season does have a gender balance, however, with five guys and seven girls, so if you guys have OCD about that, be ready. Also, the teams merge very early, at the fifth episode after only four people have been voted out. And also, fourth and third boots were in the same episode. Episode. I know that was due to the lack of budget for more episodes and the lack of contestants, so I'll let it pass. This season is also not available in English dub, so when I watched it, I had to turn on subtitles, which I'm personally fine with, but I know a lot of people are like, ugh, speak English, you morons, but guys, come on, just use subtitles. I'm not even an anime freak, but I think all people need to get used to subtitles. Lots of foreign masterpieces can be at your disposal if you just give it a chance. I already took a vow to make my future kid get used to reading subtitles at a very early age. I'm not gonna lie, it's higher on my list of priorities than getting him into college. Obviously, this season doesn't have quite the quality of their more current work, but I still really enjoy it for what it is. Back in 2020, you know, a long time ago, there weren't many series out there on YouTube that could post animated content at this regularity with this quality. I think it's still impressive now, as I'm working on my own animated film right now, and even comparing it to some of their old work, man, I got a lot to learn from this company. <laughs> some of my favorite moments from the season consist of Tom using his idol to protect Jake despite it getting him eliminated, showing Tom's growth being the spy who only cared about his job to a man who just wants to save his annoying little boy toy. I also enjoy Nick, a rich kid who's also very forgettable. Luckily, he wasn't forgettable enough for me to not mention him here, but he once won a challenge simply because everyone forgot he existed. While I love the gap, 
Yeah, I did find it getting pretty old pretty quick. And since Nick sticks around to basically the end of the season, I will say I started not caring for it past episode 8, I'd say. Gret was another character this season worth mentioning as she played the more traditional antagonist for these types of reality shows. Stirring up the drama between Tom and Jake and working with Fiore, she genuinely didn't seem to care who she hurt as long as it got her further in the game. And while she's not that complex, I was completely fine with Gret not having too much depth. Yeah, she got something in her boot episode about her parents, but some people are just assholes and I think that's fine. Miriam was probably hands down the best written, however, as she not only had a pretty decent emotional backstory, but her relationship being the grandma hooking up Tom and Jake together was surprisingly wholesome. The characters that I'm not mentioning are simply because a lot of them were just cannon fodder with little depth. Dan and Will both had five lines collectively as the first two boots. As far as I know, Dan was the nerd, Will was the coward, and that's as far as they go. Ashley and Lil were a bit more interesting as Ashley's big sister love for Fiore getting betrayed was an unexpected sad moment. I wasn't a big fan of Ashley, but I understand she was rather done dirty in the show. Lil, on the other hand, I felt like didn't have even that, because Lil was basically just a survivor reference and that's all she had to offer. Gabby was someone I was really shocked to see go out early. I genuinely laughed at all the bits of her talking to her evil self. It's fantastic and I honestly think it was very underutilized in the season. So yeah, third boot kind of sucks. Now finally, Ellie, the character who wins the season at the end is okay. I never had an opinion of her because she just seemed like the nice girl next door. Nothing to her personality other than being the normal girl. However, I will give brownie points to Odd Nation for attempting to make her more gray in morality. When she signed up to help Gret break things off with Tom and Jake, it was nice to see Ellie's morality fighting her need to win the game. This was also helped by the budding friendship between Jake and Ellie getting nipped. Overall, the season, while nothing crazy, had a lot of fun ideas. The fact that the episodes are only 15 minutes is rather impressive how much they're able to cram into each episode. Sometimes it does lead to certain plot lines getting rushed, but other times it works in their favor at keeping the pacing fast. I wouldn't say I'd ever watch it again, but I can marvel at it as a product of its time and know that it was revolutionary for what Odd Nation was able to eventually grow into in the later seasons. Check this one out if you guys want, and I'll be giving this season a 5 out of 10. Next week we'll be looking at Disventure Camp Season 2, and in a bit more depth. See y'all then, oh yeah, and make sure to like and subscribe.